Welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Skaggly Bones back with a, another shoe review for you today. This time we're going to be looking at two pairs of Bontrager shoes. Uh, the Bontrager, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> see now, now I'm going crazy. This is the Bontrager RL, sorry about that, RL Road Visibility. Yeah. So you can see right there. Bontrager RL Road Visibility. And what Viz means is it's talking about a high visibility shoe. And by the way, it also says RL right there. See? That's what happens when you're not paying attention. Uh, so we're going to look at the RL High Visibility and RLX shoe. Okay? So both these pair are what we call uh, mid to high range carbon fiber shoes in Bontrager's line. Now, without this is the range right before you go into a BOA dial system. So right before you go into a BOA dial system, you'd be in this range. Now, they do make some that are carbon fiber, that aren't carbon fiber sold that have BOA dial system, but these are a step up from even those. Now, as you'll notice, I have the plate cleats on them with my coffee uh, cap covers, coffee shop covers. So I'm not going to talk about those, but we are going to talk about the shoes. So first of all, high visibility. Um, in fact, uh, these are called the RL, these are called, R, or sorry, RL and then RXL. So what's the main difference between the two? Well, first of all, if you look at this shoe, it's in a bright visibility yellow. Uh, one other thing is this portion here, it lights up as well. So at night, uh, the back of the shoes, um, these this portion will light up. Also, the yellow is a high visibility yellow, um, which uh, when lights shine on them at night, they, they, they don't light up, but they kind of glow. So these are a very high visibility shoe. Retention system wise, very simple. You have two Velcro straps in the front and you have the standard ratchet system buckle on the side. Now one thing about this ratchet system, unlike a lot of your cheaper ratchet systems, put both down to pull out. Uh, you pull up using the ratchet like that, and if you want to come out one, let's say you have, you're pulling on this, you pull one and it will come out just one stop. So you, if this is a split here, which allows for single increment adjusting out if it is too tight, your feet have swelled during the day. One other thing I like about these as well, and, and Shimano shoes, most, most ratchet buckle systems have this. Okay, if you look here, you have a bolt and you can change the distance that the buckle actually sits, or the ratcheting a lever sits on the shoe itself. So I have these farther down so that they're gonna be farther down on the buckle. The other thing is too, you can pull these ratchets out, these pieces out, and you can change them out. Now, uh, as you can tell, these are pretty much basic when it comes to, uh, they're very lightweight, uh, very well vented, um, but these are pretty much basic end of the spectrum for their carbon fiber soles. These run about $160. Now, the one thing with Bontrager that is nice, all their carbon fiber soles, you can change out their heel pads. If you notice there, there is a Phillips head screwdriver, and you can change out the heel pad. Um, you're not, you can't change out the toe pad, but almost no companies can, even CD don't ever change out the toe pads because for the most part you're not shouldn't be wearing out your toe pads that much. I think you can buy them and glue them back on, but um, they're they're not going to unbolt and come off. But the heel pad will unbolt and come off. If you if you can see there, this is all big one plastic piece, and this whole piece comes off. It is glued on, uh, kind of, but you just peel it off, and take the screw out, put a new one on. Okay. Now this is one of their lightest or sorry, they're at least stiffest. This is um, the, the higher the number, the more stiff they are. Uh, let's see here if I can see on these guys. Okay, right here it says 12 stiffenix index. They go up to 14, Bontrager goes up to 14, and they kind of, and this one's kind of rubbed away, you can't, the paint's rubbed off. Um, gold series carbon sole. Okay, as you can see there, gold series carbon sole. Um, on these, it says silver series. So they have a bronze series carbon sole, which is a eight, okay? And then these are a 10. 
Eight is their lowest stiffness. Sorry, there is one more that's uh, at least stiff, as stiff as this. And I think they are pretty much a, um, as you can see, I've beaten these up pretty good. You can see some marks here. Um, I actually had an accident with these. And I had to put my foot down. And as you can see right there, I've kind of skidded into the, dug into the carbon fiber a little bit. But uh, they're still really good. Uh, so these are number 12, these are the silver series, they have a bronze series carbon fiber. So they also have their non, uh, they have a special braced non-carbon fiber sole, which is a, um, it's a, it's a yeah, oh, nylon sole, I guess you call it. And, and these are really stiff, by the way. I mean, they do flex a little bit, they flex a little bit more than your Louis Garneau's that I just did a review on the LS100s, uh, but they have a thinner sole. Louis Garneau's by quite a bit, as you can see there. Um, even with the adapter plate, these are pretty profiles. It is not that high at all. So very nice lightweight soles on these. So really like it. Even though they have this this type of retention system, I really like it. One other thing that I really like is this side comes out. You can do this. Like so, flip this up, but they put some stitching in on the tongue to keep the tongue in place so it's not flapping all over the place. Um, the tongue is vented, it's got some little bits of venting in there. Uh, it does have kind of this tongue pad so you can kind of uh, make sure it's pulled tight. Um, the sole comes out, the informed sole comes out, like so. Now, this pair, and the big difference, I'm going to show you these. Have venting there and an outtake that comes out of there. So venting comes in there, hot air goes out, and you can see the channels. If you look inside there, there's some channels in there. So it works really well. Uh, comes in, air comes in, flows around. Actually, what happens is it comes in this way, flows around, loops back around, and comes back out. So it has this whole channel that it follows. Works really awesome uh, um, <laughs> as far as keeping your feet cool for only having two little small vents. Uh, unlike the Louis Garneau's, which have a lot of vents, these have very minimalistic vents, but they work very well. Uh, I almost get no overheating in these shoes whatsoever. So, what's the big difference? People will look at these and they'll look at the black ones and they'll say, well, other than the other than the color and the fact that these are made for high visibility, what's the difference? So I'm going to kind of strap these together. Kind of see where I had the accident here, kind of wore the buckle. But buckles are easy to change out. It didn't even come close to wearing down or wearing out the buckle. So what's the big difference between the high visibility, uh, Bond Traeger, RLs, and the RLXs, or RXLs. So I'm going to set that one off to the side there. We're going to take this shoe here and we're going to compare it. So first of all, one of the first things you'll notice is the inner sole, the insole is quite a bit different. So you take this out and this has a little temperature gauge on it and you can heat mold these. So this, what, what actually you're heat molding is not this insole itself, by the way, this kind of has a, it's a fuzzy bottom here, so it sticks in there really well. But this piece comes off. Now, you can actually change out this piece here for other Bontrager ones. They make other insteps. But this piece here, you can you heat mold this. So you get it between see, 171 degrees Fahrenheit, just that piece. And then you put it back on the insole like that and then you slip it back in the shoe you put the shoe on you ratchet the shoe down get the shoe all tightened down and then you kind of you sit on them with your feet in the down position so I recommend like a stool or something you do that with both shoes so you take both insoles out at the exact same time don't want to do one shoe at a time take both insoles out at the exact same time and do them both at the same time because you only get one uh, Thermax uh, little temperature thing there. Now you can reheat these and stuff uh, and do them again, but I recommend doing it right the first time. So 
do it and you can kind of custom fit this for your foot. Now, have I used these? No, because <laughs> have I, I reheated these? No, because I actually like this. It sits up into the bottom of my foot. This is where a place where I get a lot of pain after long rides and it's kind of eliminated a lot of the pain that I get in my feet after long 50 mile or more rides. So these work awesome. One other thing that, that is the channel the same? Yes, as you can see, yeah, I don't know, the lighting ain't that good. But it's still got the same channel in here. Now the big difference you'll notice is this is a less shiny carbon than this is. This is also a stiffer carbon index, it's a 12. So it's a lot stiffer if you notice. I, can, I can't really bend those. These I can bend. See that? Bending them a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. I'm bending those. These, I'm sure if I really torqued on them, I could bend them, but I'm not bending them. Okay, now, venting wise, it's still got pretty much the same venting, other than these are black. Uh, it still has the same type of tongue. As you can see there, the only difference is this isn't white, so it tends to get a little less dirty. It's got the same venting on there. I'll put the insole back in. Um, you have the same sizing information on the inside. Okay, as you can see there, these are 12.5 US, 11.5, and 45.5, which is a little different than the Louis Garneau's European sizes. Okay, and these are extremely comfortable. The interesting thing is these are slightly smaller. These are size 12 US, these are 12.5 US. And these are just as comfortable as these. So work out pretty good. One other thing you'll notice different is this piece here. Um, if you notice on this shoe, the heel cup is a little bit more pronounced. I mean, the heel cup on these are really pronounced as well, if you notice that. See how that heel cup is? Okay, but this isn't, it's hard here on the sides, but it's not as hard in the back. You know, it is harder here, right here. It does have some venting back here, and then it gets a little softer up here, okay? Which is kind of on purpose. It, uh, Bontrager has always been good with their heel cup system, uh, where your foot just ratchets right in there. But if you'll notice, the whole retention system with this shoe and the heel cup system is a lot better. So what you actually have here is a piece of aluminum and that sits in there. You could actually bend that and tighten that down on your foot, uh, kind of crimp it in. You do also have some ventilation back here. Um, the material in here is a very, almost, I would say almost like a sandpaper type material. It sticks to your fingers, it sticks to your, to your socks, to your clothing, and it, and it keeps your foot stuck inside uh, that heel. As well as this being heavy plastic right here. So this is a harder plastic right here, which allows for better heel retention system. And then of course, uh, this, this uh, aluminum piece, which you can bend and kind of push around your heel <clears throat> and allows you to lock your heel in there very good. Retention system wise, it's gonna be almost identical. There's only one slight difference you're gonna have in these shoes over the RLs. Um, by the way, both of them have uh, titanium buckle right here. Um, nothing fancy though, but uh, so you still have the Velcro straps just like that. But if you notice, this retention system comes out from this side. Now, so when you go to replace it, you just replace this whole pad. This is a very stiff pad here, unlike, oops, I almost dropped the camera there, folks. That would have been a good one. Unlike this guy here, which is a very soft material, this is a stiffer material. And what this allows is to really tighten down your foot and get your foot and push your heel back into the back <clears throat> of the heel cup. So if you notice, this has reverse teeth on it, as you can see there. And then it has a numbering system. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this. There's this little numbering system there um, on the black and you just kind of slide it in. If you can see there's teeth there, slide this in and you kind of get it to the number you want it at. And for me, I wear them at 10 right there. 
and then you put it in there. And just like the other one, if you want to re pull it out one click, you just kind of do that, and it'll pull out just one click instead of releasing the whole way. Now, the, the reason for having the adjustment on both sides is you, you want this big strap right in the middle of the top of your foot. So that allows you to really lock in your heel very good. There, like I said, they're not going to be as aerodynamic as like a boa closure system, but at uh, at the price point that these are at, um, you're looking a lot better deal than a boa closure system. But as you can see, you can replace all the parts anyways. Velcro is probably not going to go out that quickly. Uh, most Velcro shoes people have for for almost 20 years, so the Velcro is not really a problem. Uh, and this system, which the ratcheting system, which is where you're going to get probably most of your wear and tear on, uh, it can be replaced for a very uh, inexpensive price. I think you can get an entire rebuild kit for these shoes for probably about twenty or maybe thirty dollars. So and that's replacement of this, replacement of the buckle, and re replacement of the heel uh, plate there. So that is the Von Trigger. A little overall long-term review of your Bontrager RLs, both and the RXLs, both shoes, very excellent shoes, um, very comfortable, uh, have done a great with these, even though they are only a three, three bolt system, and I use the speed play pedals, uh, these work very good with the speed play pedals, uh, like I said, they have very low stack height, uh, they, uh, very comfortable, very stiff, very great for climbs, um, if I want something a little lighter, I'll wear these uh, kind of on a little warmer days uh, just because they tend to be a little lighter. Uh, these, if I'm going to go for more uh, longer rides and I just need something to really retain um, or retain my foot in there, then I'll uh, kind of use these uh, more. But And, I, of course, I try to rotate my shoes um, as much as possible, kind of keep them both wearing at the same amount. Uh, since carbon uh, fiber soles... Uh, you know, take a little bit more uh, care than your uh, nylon soles. So, like I said, that's my review. Um, it, it, you can uh, purchase your uh, Bond Trager shoes at any of your Trek uh, retailers. A lot of times you can order them online as well. Um, so I did go through my uh, Trek retailer back in, um, uh, back in Virginia for these. And like I said, I've been really happy with these. Got a lot of miles on them. Uh, probably about, you know, five or six thousand miles on these shoes so been great shoes so that's it for me folks uh, give a thumbs up if you liked uh, any comments in the comment section below and make sure you folks subscribe this is Skagla Bones and I'm out